Y'all working hard? Yeah. All right, we gonna see, cause I'm playing. I'm playing one on one. Oh, All right. right. So I guess it's my turn. My name is Dorian Finney Smith. I'm from Portsmouth, Virginia. And this is about to be my eighth year in the NBA. I'm with the Brooklyn Nets now. The year of transition for you too, going from Dallas to Brooklyn. How has that gone and how are you adjusting to your new surroundings? It's good, man. It's been love there. No, I can't wait to get started. You know, last year was a little wild, my first time getting traded, but I'm happy it's to Brooklyn. By the grace of God, you know, the NBA went a certain type of way. <laughs> it fit him perfectly, you know. Now the notoriety is coming because he's a big part of that. He's a great player. I'm excited about this year to show everybody the different parts of his game that nobody has seen. This is Dorian Finney-Smith from Portsmouth, known as P-Town to Brooklyn. Happy time. Come on, y'all ready? Come on, let's get it. We're leaving Norfolk, heading over here to Portsmouth. When you say you from Portsmouth, they might turn their face up at you a little bit, but it's prideful. It's one of those types, yeah, we always trying to prove somebody wrong. You know, we bounced around from Section 8, so we ain't never lived in a house for more than like two, three years or in a place, so we bounced around throughout the whole city. Like, I used to stay that way, and I stayed this way, and that's the court right here I used to be playing on. Call that the Finney Court, because I never lost on that one right there, Coach. I never lost on that court. Where the rock at? Yeah. <laughs> See, the uh, the projects I grew up in got tore down and had lead in it. They had lead in the dirt, right, right, right. you know what I'm saying? So I can't even take y'all there because we had to run the water for yeah. three to five minutes. First. Before you can yeah. goddamn use this shit. Yeah, yeah. Double rim? Yeah, double rim double shorty. Uh-huh. If you can't, you can't shoot on here, you're not a real shooter. That's all I'm gonna say. If you can't shoot here, you're not a real shooter. Board, that's it. That's it. I ain't never lost on this court. I'm gonna start you out today. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma stayed out here for 20, like 25 years. Hey, they call this the trap coach because there's so many speed bumps. So you get stuck out here, it's hard to get out. And so I got pictures of me young standing right outside of one of these doors. We knew that we wanted more from, you know, that there was more out here. Portsmouth, Virginia is one of the smallest cities in the 757. Heavily populated with African Americans in a low income area. Young guys, talented guys, you know, but at the end of the day, a lot of guys didn't have direction. Portsmouth is a loving city. Due to certain circumstances, we have limited resources, so people don't really get the exposure that we are, but it's a caring city too. We get overshadowed by some of the violence, but there's a lot of positive things that's going on there too. They're a part of what is known as the 757, so when I first got here, I ain't understand what all the 757 mean. We take a lot of pride in 757 because, we, like I said, we get overshadowed. We have a lot of successful athletes and professionals here. It's tough, you know, it's gritty. It flies under the radar as far as like the athletes we had come out of there. You know, I have nothing but love for the 757. You can hear them saying things like Portsmouth Strong, you know, P Town. So it's an area rich in culture and tradition. When we was coming up, like our family was tight because that's just how we was. Like it's just all we knew. My mom took care of uh, all six of us. I'm the oldest, so I was around when Dorian dad went to prison and stuff. So right before he went to prison, like it was good. And then when he went, we just got closer, you know. It was just rough sometimes, you know. My sisters and my brothers can go to their pop's house and I would just, you know, just be, you know, uh, hanging around me and my little sister, so. But my mom never discredited my dad or anything like that. So she did a real good job of, you know, and being honest, open and honest with us. His dad did what he did, but he still was their dad. And I made sure we all stayed connected somehow. I mean, my mom taking in our neighbors. I had my uncle living with us, my cousin living with us. And she was just, you know, just trying to get back and trying to keep everybody together, you know, and that's just the type of person she is. She's very selfless. 
I never had no time. Cause I had other people kids. One lady called me like, you see my son, he been here for a week. <laughs> what you mean? My mom been always so welcoming. Always just had a million people over for dinner. <laughs> and she always held people accountable. She gonna wanna know your grades, you know, she gonna wanna know how you doing. So they just always loved that. I was limited resources too growing up out of a negative neighborhood. So the times that I didn't have it, Miss Dez uh, automatically just come right here. You can stay right here. If I don't got nothing to wear, all the older brothers, Ben, Day Day, they always just gave it to me. We related to each other and um, just the brotherhood we had. When my lecture was off, you know, we never judged each other. We knew each other's struggles, so it just made us closer, you know, growing up. His mom, I commend her with the job that she did with her kids as being a single mom. Back then, I like, man, your mom deserves mother of the year for all the work that she puts in. They say, how you do it? I don't know, you just do it. You don't think about it. Because we all we got, that's all I tell them. It's only us. It's only us. This is Charles Peak, you know what I'm saying? I, uh, I spent a lot of time here. A lot of the sports and stuff, I don't even know how I knew how to play. I just was good. My mama used to have a bell, and she used to be ringing it on the fence. Ring, a ling, a ling, a ling. She talked trash. Mama talked a lot of trash. You? What's up? And I used to be pitching, and I'm a sore loser too. So if I'm pitching, <laughs> and you know, I'm throwing, and I think they strikes and they ball, I'm, I'm getting mad on the, you know, I'm on the mound pouting this. My mama used to be like, Fix your face. She's like, fix your face. I used to be on the mound pouting, you know what I'm saying? A tear about to come out my eyes because I'm, you know, I'm a competitor, man. I don't know. I, it's plenty of times. Like, I, I have a baseball game and a basketball game on the same day. I lead the basketball game at halftime and come over here and play. You know what I'm saying? But I remember one time I, I was in foul trouble in the basketball game and I, and I pouted on the court. Man, she snatched me out of the game, ain't let me come to the baseball game. First time we lost in like three years. You know, everybody on the team blaming me. I'm like, ah, oh, man, that's terrible. All because I was pouting and about to cry in the game. I was like, man. Dodo. Dodo number five out of six. The quietest. So when it's time to go, I fuss with everybody like, where's Dodo? Everybody got to get Dodo because he'll get dressed and he'll go to sleep. It'll be his baseball game. But I have to tell everybody, make sure Dodo got his socks. Make sure Dodo, <laughs> make sure Dodo got his shoes. But Dodo the easiest of them all. I have really no problems out this boy except for in elementary when he was doing the worm down the hallway on the floor. <laughs> Back then, I was just a little, I had a lot of energy. I didn't know how to get off. You know, I did a worm, followed by some, some flips. But you gotta know, wrestling was big back then. Come on, Scotty too hot? Come on, man. I ain't never did the worm again, just know that. Goofy, laughing, joking, dancing. Just a tall, linky kid that played all sports. Football, basketball, baseball. So, Miss Dez always had all of them in all sports. They was always doing something, not just one, all of them. Dodo, you could tell he was an amazing athlete then, so much so that we actually thought he would probably be a baseball player and not necessarily this big star basketball player that he became. First time I ever saw Dodo, we were doing a, a baseball tournament and Dodo was pitching and his mom pointed him out to me to make sure you get some pictures of my baby. And I would hear that for the next six years running. <laughs> Make sure you get some pictures of my baby. I used to bring them to the gym a lot. Like Ben, I played them till he beat me. Smacking it, all that, I do them, make them cry, smack it till they beat me. Now I don't play them no more. I taught you what you know. <laughs> so, uh-uh. You want a sandwich? One of y'all want a breakfast sandwich? How you doing? Can I get a uh, bacon, egg, and cheese? There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. There we go. We Greyhounds are here. My high school, they prideful. Uh, I ain't played all my freshman year. 
you know, you're supposed to be mad if you ain't playing, but it's just how how you carry yourself, too. You know what I'm saying? Some people let that shit, or they work. When I was in high school, I was hurt, but I'm sitting up straight, you know what I'm saying, still cheering. When I got in the locker room in the crib, I was crying like a motherfucker. Mad, boy. Like, this man got me messed up. But now I love Gooseby, though. I saw him going to his eighth grade year. Little frail, skinny kid. Could actually really play. I was thinking about putting him on JV, but I, it was three ninth graders there. I said, nah, they, they're too good to play JV. It was Doe, the Carlos Anderson, and Jeremy Canty. Ninth grade, he didn't play at all. Not one bit of minutes, and I played. Me and Jeremy played ninth grade. You know, I was tall, clumsy. I could barely dunk. I just ain't feeling my body yet. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't figure it out. You used to call him Bambi, because, you know, you're taking all the hits, you keep falling down. So he didn't play much, he didn't like it. I wasn't the type to be mad or jealous or anything, but I wasn't okay with sitting on the bench. You know, it, it hurt me, and I needed that. I had to make him feel like he was picked over. If his friend is easy, sometimes it's not for us. If we got to work hard for it, that's it. I know that's the, the road we got to take. Dodo had a brother. I went out of town, and when I came back, he was supposed to come over to uh, get his pictures done. But I got that phone call. It said he had passed away. Not a good day. It was just a, a party and teenagers being childish with things that can change people's lives, you know? And the guys had, they had guns or whatever the case may be. And my brother trying to stick up for his friends, you know, went over there to, you know, try to settle things down and it didn't end well for him. Dodo was with him. And I didn't even know that for a long time. He didn't even tell me like he seen, he seen him get shot. I mean, back then, won't no mental health. You know, it wasn't that big as it is today. You know, we just kind of buried it and kept, and kept moving. You know, I just, I just started working real, real hard. I would say I seen him at rock bottom, but that hurt didn't hinder him. That hurt motivated him. It motivated them all. When his brother passed, he took on a totally different identity. It was like, y'all not gonna stop me for nothing. He grew up. He wasn't no baby no more. Mm -mm. He grew up right before my eyes. After that happened, I just knew I didn't want to be in Portsmouth no more. You know, my daughter, I don't want my daughter to grow up around here like me. And so, you know, I put all my marbles in one basket. If I don't give it my all, then what are we doing here? He just turned into a different animal that everybody knew he was going to the league. This is Dorian's journey to the NBA. Just to honor him, he's been a big part of the Portsmouth community, plus in Oakland High School, so this is sort of like his retirement jersey wall, but we want to include everything that was important to him and his journey to the NBA. We surprised him at his camp that he threw here at Norcom, and it really shocked him. His mom was part of the design, and it really meant a lot to him because he put a lot into it. You know how we say the inward expression of your outer self? So this kind of embodies that for Portsmouth. This is how people of Portsmouth take pride in what they do. To walk in the door and see this, I think this gives, it adds some hope to, because it's a constant reminder. And we want the other kids in the community to realize this is possible. And again, as coach keeps stressing, through hard work. It's not easy and we know that. Going to the junior year, we was in my room talking, and they were like, Coach, going to our senior year, we're gonna play a national schedule. I was like, man, can we just get through the junior year first? Are y'all sure? Yeah, Coach, we sure. Coach, we'll be, coach, we be all right. It's, it's gonna help us win our first state championship our senior year. But going to the junior year, it, it just showed me the confidence level that they had in themselves, that they feel like that they can compete on a national level against anybody. Of course, you know, we was not expected to win because we just lost two um, all time with the players, Darius Stiz and Deshaun Williams. So our expectation was, are oh, they gonna be okay? They got Doe coming back, Jeremy Canty and me. They didn't even know who the point guard was gonna be. Doe, who was like a 6'5". I was a Chicago Bulls fan, so 
Mike and Scotty Pippen. So Pippen always bring the ball up. I was like, that could be dope, a point forward. And they were looking like, he ain't gonna be the point guy until like he started dominating games. Bringing the ball down, getting you on your spot. Okay, now I wanna get these 17 rebounds. Hey, look, let me get my buckets right now. But he was never a selfish player. He was always in like mentality, like let me get the team involved, but you need me, I'm here. There's always someone that gotta be selfish that uh, hit the open guy with the extra pass, you know, diving on the floor, defending the best offensive player, like the little things. His leadership, I think, was probably the most important thing to that team, more than his physical attributes. Because when it came down to it, it was action first with him and the rest of the team followed. Fiery, compete, talkative, gonna give it his all. Coach Goosby got the fire in Dodo. Before that, Dodo was just quiet. Coach Goosby used to yell at him. I said, you gotta yell at him like I yell at him. I finally seen him get mad. He got that steel, went down there. I, I said, oh, that's what I've been looking for. He dumped the ball so hard, he shot the crowd. Everybody was looking like, all he cared about was winning. And then you could see it in his work ethic, too. Like, it's not just it happened on the court. Like, track, he coming in first every time, doing 5, 15 miles. When college coaches come in, he show his dominance. He let everybody know they come in that gym, I'm the best guy. It's a one-point lead for Petersburg. Down the floor, Nicole Anderson flips the defense, flips it up, no good, check in! I see Norcom win their first state championship game in dramatic fashion. Junior year was an unexpected championship. For them to persevere and get to the state championship, unpredicted. No one predicted them, but they knew what they could do. It's crazy. It was just a surreal. It's like, boy, we can really do this. I always said I had the best seat in the house, and I, I like taking that far corner, and uh, that's what you get. This is after the first championship. When it was new to the city, they, they threw on a big gala. It was a real good time for Norcom High School and, and this basketball team of which uh, Dodo was a leader. We called three the hard way. Three the hard way was Carlos on the end, Jeremy with the, with the glasses like men in black, and then Dodo right behind him. Those three guys probably made up most of the entertainment package when you went to a Norcom High School basketball game, which was always sold out. And, and they came to see, you know, not just the normal, they came to see the spectacular. And these guys got us used to that real quick. During the senior year, the following that they had was just amazing. All games sold out. Students, alumni, people who didn't go to Norcom or attend Norcom, they're like, we don't want to miss this moment. Beating people that's in the NBA number one draft, we beat Anthony Bennett. Mike Cabongo, all of them, we beat the Demathas, the Word of God. Friendly Prep, some of the best programs in the country. It was a tough schedule, and they just played with, y'all not better than us. It's been exciting knowing that we could compete with the top teams in the nation, because my freshman year, we was like, oh yeah, when we get seniors, we're going we gonna to be a national team. It was easier when nobody expected you to do it, but now it's going to be way harder because we're going to get everybody's best shot. And we don't get a lot of respect for us basketball, so we just want to try to put this area on the map too, 757, and post to be exact. End up being like top five in the nation, you know. We definitely was, we was different out there. <laughs> it was their character. It was their presence on the court that was more defining than anything. The way they played together, the way they stuck together. The way Gooseby let him, because he ain't let up on him. One thing about that group, especially though, they hated to lose. Sometimes, you know, to get to where you want to be, you got to hate to lose more than you love to win. The Norcom Greyhounds repeat as state champions once again. That sort of propelled our program for the next five years, because when guys came down, like, okay, now we got to meet that standard. So I'm very proud of them guys. Go. There's my best friend playing right there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my 
God. Shit, we got the cameras out. You better hoop then. Get some buckets for the camera, man. man. God damn. What's up, baby? You good? Yeah, yeah. You can need somebody like Doe to contain me. Anybody else's barbecue chicken and everybody out here know that. These people want to see the city. I say, you know what? Come on. They want to see it. This is where it all started at, you feel me? This unk right here. Unk been a bum for years. That's just what's going on. I don't know what. Get, get the camera on him though. Listen. I'm 50 years old. I got to run. He didn't. Ball game. Over. They've been playing for a long time. They've been about here since I was little. You see that hat right there? You see that hat right there? Come on now. For a reason. Yes, sir. <laughs> we know do <Duel> out here. <laughs> What's up? He was so happy. Hey, he was so happy when I went to Florida. <laughs> he talking about you should have went there at the beginning. The first time I saw him was going into, I believe, his junior year of uh, high school. Just loved him as a player. He was six foot seven, fairly competitive, great rebounder very, very good skill level. And we started trying to recruit him right away when we saw him play. Billy liked guys that's a little tough, you know, and he came, Coach D came to my house. You know, he seen how I was living, you know, and I respect him for that. And uh, I didn't go there when I first came out because I just had my daughter, so I didn't want to go too far. When Dorian was coming out of high school, he elected to stay closer to home. He went to Virginia Tech. And when there was a coaching change Virginia Tech, that's when Dorian and I started to speak more because he obviously had opened up his recruiting. So we had a player named Vernon Macklin who was getting ready to finish up his career at Florida. And Vernon and Dorian were from the same, basically high school, same area. They knew each other very, very well. We was brought up kind of in the same house. You know, like Vernon was there with me all, most of the time and you know, Dorian lived there. So it was, you know, it's just like his little brother as well. Being in Vernon Macklin lit that fire like, okay, I can do it. You know, I can go to college, I can get a degree. He had good mentorship with those two. So Vernon was someone that was able to connect some of the dots for Dorian to say, okay, here's what Florida's like, this is what the program's like, this is what the coaching staff's like. And I think Vernon, you know, played a pretty prominent role in terms of giving him an understanding of what our program was all about. Once I seen like the direction the program was going in, the development that Billy Donovan had with the guys, and for me it was kind of no-brainer because I felt like Dorian Gain transitioned better over there. The first thing he got there, Vernon called me and was like, hey, Doe going to the league, he's an NBA player. I was like, oh, I kind of figured that, you know, but he was like, nah, it's it, it's time now. But you could just tell that there were times during the period of when his brother had passed away, that it really, really had a lot of impact on him. He knew we never talked to nobody about my brother, so transfers couldn't play back then. We had to sit, so my whole sit out year, he had me, you know, work through that, you know, find, you know, new coping mechanism. And I give him credit, he put the work into it, and I think the pain's ever gonna go away. I don't think that ever happens. But I think he's been able to, as he's gotten older, to process a little bit better and take care of himself of how he needs to internalize what happened. Once I talked about it, I just felt so much better just because I was able to, you know, get it off my chest. I grew a lot. He made me work through my problem. He didn't let me run away from it, you know. I had to hit it head on. Once he figured out he could make some money doing it, I guess he buckled down because he knew I did a lot of work and I was tired. <laughs> my mama, I'm telling my mama working, he started using that. I didn't think pass it. I'm just thinking, just go to school, go to college. You might even go overseas. Coming out of college, I had like 21 workouts, 22 workouts. I was with him through the whole process from the Chicago combine to all types of stuff, so it, it was definitely exciting. He had a little draft party at downtown Norfolk. We all chilling, you know, eating, enjoying ourselves. You know, he's in the other room, and when his name ain't get called, I felt his spirit drop. You know how best friends are, we just connected. I had a team tell me, your mom gonna be happy on draft night, you know? So I thought I was gonna get drafted, but shit, you gotta move on. I just remember like the look in bro eyes that he was going to give it his all to, you know, get to the next level. I watched him at his lowest again, but I feel like he learned 
from all his lows in his life that he can't, you know, make an excuse. Like I told him, I said, now, for you, it could be a blessing in disguise because now you get to pick the team you think best fits you. If he would've got drafted, he probably wouldn't have landed in a situation better than what he landed in at the beginning of his career. I mean, he chose the Mavs, and I saw him play summer league out in Vegas. I said, he has a real chance. It felt good to tell her I made the team, you know, just to hear her scream and all that. Made it to the NBA. All I could do was cry. <laughs> We are gathered here tonight not only to revel in the joy of this evening, but also to support vital causes that impact the lives of our community. Good evening. Good evening. All right. First, let me thank my family who support me and continues to support me and help me give back to the community each year, and especially my mom. Yeah, huh? Please show my mom some love tonight. There we go. Now, therefore, I, Shannon E. Glover, mayor of the city of Portsmouth, Virginia, do hereby proclaim September 1, 2023, as Dorian Finney-Smith Celebration Day in Portsmouth. We have one more recognition to present to Dorian Finney-Smith. It is my esteemed honor to present the key to the city of Portsmouth. Thank you, Dorian, for all that you have done, for all that you're doing, and all that you will do. We love you. We wish nothing but the best for you in your future endeavors, and may God continue to bless you and your family. And it's a rough, uh, you know, rough time of the month. You know, this the, the month my brother passed. So it means a lot. I appreciate it. What do you want your legacy to be? Um, that, you know, he was, a de he was determined, you know, hardworking, never made no excuse, and family man. God fearing family man. <laughs> There it is right there. Give me a kiss. He's just a genuine kid. No money or no status can change who he is. When we decided to have a nonprofit, it was about family. It was about giving back to families like ours, you know. It was about giving back to the community that we came from. Most of the volunteers have from probably stayed at my house or I fed them took them to the gym practice, so it's a big old family. She's the one that hit the ground running. She's the one in the community walking, in the community going to the bank. She's the one that do all the groundwork. This year I was like, all right, y'all, now we got 300 kids this year. Where are we gonna do this camp at? Norfolk State said, y'all can do it here. I said, yes. And whoever you wanna go against, I don't know, but don't take it easy on nobody. Hey! Ah! <laughs> they have it in Norfolk State this year where they can invite more kids and then teach them about basketball and teach them about life skills and stuff like that. That means a lot for him and his family because they always want to give back. Softball tournaments are dear to us because when we were younger, <laughs> my mom, she used to sell snow cones for a dollar, so we used to kind of make extra money on the side doing it. And it's something where our community, they always come out. Like it was an area where our community came together and we was just watching softball games. So when Dorian got to a point where he can give back to the community, it was a no brainer. Everybody come back and support, you know, because to them, Dodo is theirs. These kids look up to him. He like their hometown superheroes, like a superhero. Dodo come in. Yeah, how can I have a camp and Dodo not come? To see what he do when he come back and giving back to the village that raised him is speechless. Go. Uh, yeah, huh? They traded me. They traded you to the Knicks. 
in the net. <laughs> What's wrong with them, man? Huh? We the only team in New York. I don't know about that other team. What team you say? The Nets. It was a process, you know, it was new for him. This is the first time it ever happened, so it was kind of tough. But as a business, we got to go ahead and now we got to move forward. We're going to be in Brooklyn, it's New York, we're from Virginia. We got to adjust, you know, it's going to be some adjustments that, that has to be made. But I think he's coming along. He's definitely coming along. It's going to be a exciting year. We live on To Catch a Dorian. We here. We here. What year this is? Year eight. Year eight. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay, okay. Year eight. If you ain't hop on this train, you're late. Yeah, that part. <laughs> that part. Yeah, man. Y'all better ask about it. Spillway. I think people see him be more vocal, like be more himself. He get to build a bond with his teammates in training camp. You know, that's important. And then he also got me out here too. So y'all finna really see him be himself and I think he gonna have a great year. You know, that's my brother. You know, we spend a lot of time together, you know, especially uh, early in our careers. So it's it just fun to be in another team. And now we're both almost well, considered vets now. <laughs> so it's a sight. He is an extremely loyal human being, whether that is taking care of his family, whether that is taking care of his teammates, whether that's taking care of his community. You can see how the correlation of him being extremely unselfish off the floor fits with him being an extremely good teammate. Dodo is an amazing young man. You always knew he was destined for greatness, but like so many of us, you don't know if he would actually achieve it. He showed everybody of you. I always tell him and I'm proud of him because from where we from, we don't supposed to make it. We were supposed to be a statistic growing up with single mothers. But he was made for this. Like God ordained that title and that position just for him because he's more deserving than a lot of people that I know.